Man, how's everybody doing tonight? Y'all excited? Y'all been waiting? I've been waiting. I was like, man, this is going to be a great night. Bish ain't here. I get to, I get to do my thing unrestricted. He ain't online, is he? My mom's online. She might tell him. I used to be bad when he was in prison. She'd tell him. I'd be like, shut up, man. Don't let him know stuff like that. He'll be going to bed wondering what I'm doing and stuff, you know? I mean, like, terrible, right? What kind of mother is that anyway? Throw you out. Hey, can I tell you? Put me on front street with a big sign on my head. <laughs> you ain't right. All right. Brother, what do you call that? That's how you look glasses hang on, one ear at a time? When you get older, you just lose the cool. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. You make your own cool, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You kids think you're, you kids think you're cool when you're, they're coming looking for money, so you might as well just <laughs> hang out and do what you want to do. There you go. But then you get grandkids who think you're the coolest, so that's the oh best reward. Oh, my God. Look, and great-grandkids think you. You got a great grandbaby? Yes, no, I you do. don't. Yes, I do. What? We that started, is. We started early, so you know the return started coming in early. Well, I did too. <laughs> I mean, what were you fifteen? I mean, I was close. Oh Lord, <laughs> oh Lord. Good thing you got saved. You'd be having well, you little know, packages everywhere. <laughs> well, you know, your husband came and did the uh, the vow renewal for us, and we're yes. celebrating like forty-five years. So hey. That is so wonderful. Yay. Man. Can you believe that? With one person, it's all right. <laughs> and believe me, it's a work in process. Don't Amen. I do, I, brother, you, I okay? do believe you. Oh, okay. I do believe right. you. you gotta I didn't want nobody to get it twisted. Okay? Right, right. No, you, everybody knows you got to put the time in. Amen. <laughs> Literally. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Don't do it. <laughs> Some of y'all are way too young to know what that is. Tuma, you know what that is. <laughs> all right, all right. I saw my little old TV buffs. So tonight, we're doing things a little bit different. Uh, you know that you can study the Bible different ways, right? So you can do uh, what they call like a book study. You can say, you know, man, I wonder what happened in Acts when the church was first forming and, you know, the Holy Spirit was falling and stuff. So you go and you check out the book of Acts and you read through it. And then you could say... Uh, Oh, I think I'll do a topical study. I want to know about the Holy Spirit. So then you just read all the things, you know, concerning Holy Spirit or speaking in tongues or whatever. And then you can uh, do a word study. And so what we did tonight was we did a word study. We each picked the word gift. Well, I, I picked the word gift, and I said, hey, this is what we're studying. So <laughs> anyway, but we all, so I'm interested to see from three different perspectives where we're going to go with this. So it's not rehearsed or anything. And uh, we all did our own little study to figure out what we would come up with. Uh, first thing I did was I like to define a word. You know, what does it say? So in the dictionary, uh, under the noun, the first the first definition is a thing given willingly to someone without payment, a present. If somebody gives you something and it's still got a string attached to it, it's not a gift. You owe them. It is a debt. Amen. They might say that they've given you something, but they're not giving you nothing. Nobody gives anything for free in this world. You know what I'm saying? They all expecting something except me. I give you, I give you free things, you know. I just want you to be my friend. You, be, <laughs> I just don't want you to hurt me. All right. <laughs> no, but I'm, the, you know, people in the world, pretty much, they're they're expecting something down the road. You know what I'm saying? So we all do for one another, and take care of each other in the body and stuff. But there are a lot of corrupt people out there, and so if that that is not a gift, Amen. So a gift is something, a thing that is given willingly to someone without pay. So you're not, you're not guilting nobody into doing it or anything like that. It's important to understand that aspect of, of gift because all gifts are from the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And so if God gives you the gift of salvation or God gives you eternal life or God gives you, got to understand he did that willingly out of the kindness of his heart. He's, you know, you can blow him off. You don't have to accept it. 
you could say, you know, I'm not down for your gift. You you keep your gift. I'm, I'm I don't want to do all that. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't believe in you or this or that, and and that's okay. God God's gonna let you live your life. You know, He's not gonna strike you down or anything like. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? And the second uh, the second definition for gift is a natural ability or talent, which is also given to you by God. I can remember Ricky would be so arrogant when we were young. Y'all got to remember, we've been together since I was 14. He was 17, you know, and that brother was all about himself. <laughs> it's like, here, hold on, brother. Let me, let me bang this door out so you can get your head through right quick. It was bad. It was so bad. And so when we got older, now, you know, when you first get saved and stuff, that doesn't just fall off of you. You, you, God uses things through the years to kind of carve that stuff out, you know. And like he made me so mad sometimes. And I'd say, you're so arrogant, you know. You got this and that or whatever. You know, like some things, um, like he's a hard worker, right. Or, or he's uh, got a lot of smarts in a certain area or whatever, right. And so I'd be like, you know what, you don't have to be so arrogant about it just because I don't have this gift or that gift that you have. Because what you have, God gave you anyway. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Each one of us, God has given us particular gifts, which are natural abilities, and then also free gifts that he just threw in there for us. And we don't have any reason to brag about it because they're all gifts. Just because you're beautiful, you, don't have, you didn't make yourself. They got some people all up on their self, man. You didn't make you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Ah, ah. Be humble. You you oh, know, I mean, and look, just as quick as you got it, you can get bald and all up on your face and lose all that. So you better work on your character and be nice. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. So what do you guys, let me talk to me a little bit. Well, when I looked up the definition of gift and, a, and it's a thing given willingly to someone without payment, a present, this morning, God just, he says, you remember how when you were a little kid, you were so excited to get that gift and unwrap it, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. It didn't matter who gave it to you. You were just ready. You wanted to unwrap it and see what it was. Yeah. And as an adult, I've grown to feel unworthy mm. of the gifts that people give me. And it's very hard to receive them because you never know if there is uh, an ulterior motive, a debt that's going to have to be paid for that gift. Mm -hmm. So I think when I, when I started looking at it, I said, I, th I mean, things are stra uh, strings are attached. I'm not worthy. So it was harder for me to receive like a child when Christ said, all you have to do is receive me. Right, because it can't be that simple. So just, you're looking for the you're looking for the the string or the hook. Yeah, just, what's what do you yeah. really want? <laughs> yeah, just receive me. Unwrap me. Mm. Look at the value. And then I will unwrap you and show you your value mm -hmm. and show you your gifts. So gifts, natural talents, we all have them. But once we get a hold of Christ and he gets a hold of us and he gets a hold of those gifts in us, oh, the treasures that come out of it, then they become his. They become his glory. I likened it to a, a very precious gift, a precious gemstone or a piece of jewelry that someone may give you when you're young. And if you care for it tenderly and you nourish it and you value it and you don't beat it up and tear it up, the value increases yeah, instead of decreases. Like beanie babies? Like beanie babies. Kind of, but they yeah, went out, they right? they sure do. <laughs> I ripped the tag off a beanie baby that turned out to be worth about $5,000 by the time. You I know, when it. you were saying about uh, not feeling worthy enough to receive a gift from God, um, I, w I thought about that earlier, too. And, and, and I think a lot of us, you know, when we look at ourselves and, and like, it's just over a period of time, we do things periodically, even after being saved, that we might not be so proud of or, you know, an area we got to struggle with or something. And so we, we get in that box of I'm not worthy. But I think it's real important and the Lord really wants us to know and meditate on his kindness and his goodness because that... Uh, like I said earlier, that is what drew us and that is what will keep us. 
because if we start getting off into a works mentality, uh, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't work on areas of your life, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't strive to be your best version of yourself, but what I'm saying is, is we can get, the enemy will get us so focused on picking Lynn out of our belly button and feeling sorry for ourselves and how unworthy we are and this and that, that we miss God and we miss fun, cool life because we're so stressed out over trying to, trying to get in this ridiculous zone, you know? I mean, you, all right, let me just be like, you ain't never going to be worthy, okay? <laughs> you, you never going to be good enough. You're never going to be perfect enough, you know? So just get over yourself. Just realize it's, it's not about us. It is about him. It is his kindness, his goodness that he loves us and draws us. It's not because we, we were so amazing and walking down the street. And he just said, oh, i got to have them in my kingdom. So, you know, I mean, he just, it's, it's all about him. Am I making sense? Oh, absolutely. You know, as you walk with God, well, matter of fact, just him drawing you, the drawing is it's twofold because it's for you okay. and it's for him. Yes. Because, you know, for instance, for those that do fishing, which is not my thing, but by the token, when you go out there, you'll see sometimes people will catch a fish and it's so small that they use it for bait True. To, to bring other fish. So to an extent, I'm not minimizing your value. I'm just saying <laughs> sometimes that you are the bait to reach other people. That's good. That's good. And, you know, sometimes we don't understand that. You know, you look at you and say what it is that you have. But, you know, the neat thing is God is always giving because he starts with you and then he continues to give and he continues to do things. He continues to change things in your life. And then all of a sudden, you who were a monster like, you know, I was in some cases, I got kids and now I've been able to raise them and see them do greater works because of the fact of God being in my life and what he was doing in me. I'm teaching them good things. I could tell you some of the bad things I thought about teaching them, but you know, hey, now that I'm in my right mind, you know, I'm able to be a fisher of men and be effective in the sense to just let God use me. Because I'm not the big deal, God is. Come on, brother, that's true. As we begin, uh, and I wrote, I mean, these notes, I was just jotting down notes earlier, and it says, as we begin to use our gifts for the glory of God and to advance his kingdom, they become more developed and fine-tuned and therefore become more valuable to us and to his kingdom as we help lead other people to the Lord. That's, good. That's where the value comes. That's where those gifts come. You know, he gave us the gift of salvation, which justified us in his father's eyes. That's Jesus right. Did. Then we walk out the sanctification, which is the developing of those gifts and talents as he's given us. And then the glorification comes when our life here on earth ends and we realize that the truest value of the gift given us and the gifts we have within us, it, that's where we realize it when we get there. And we meet him face to face, and he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And you put on that crown of jewels that he has been holding for you. Amen. And then what happens? And then you spend eternity with your king of kings. Yeah. Okay, then. <laughs> um, I've, I've noticed something myself, um, and it was basically through reading and everything, the greatest gift that we can give back to God is cultivating our gift. Amen. You know? So God gives us the gift and um, because it says in 1 Corinthians that all these are the work of one and the same spirit, the spirit of God, right? And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So you don't Amen. even work up your gift. Man, God gives you that gift according to your, your personality and your bent. He gives you something uh, that's for you to do, you know? Like, there's some things that make me very uncomfortable that God has gifted me for. Mm. Like, I don't, I'm really, believe it or not, I'm kind of a loner, and I, I'm not really shy, but I'm a, um, what you call that? I'm, I'm an introvert, yeah. Like, I can be all by myself and be just so happy. You know what I'm saying? I can do my own thing, I enjoy my company, you know? <laughs> and, and so... But but he puts me out front, you know what I'm saying? Like, he wants me to teach or he wants me to do this or that. And I'm like, I, you know, I can remember when Ricky first talked about being a pastor, you know, when he first got saved and stuff. I was like, you know, man, I didn't sign up for this. This was not how it was when we got together. And, you know, this is not, this is not 
what I envisioned for my life. You know? <laughs> but I shut up and just got in the car because <laughs> I realized that I, I was not safe by myself. <laughs> I haven't always made the best choices. And when we don't make the best choices in life, God will surround us with people who challenge us. They use their gifts to help us to, to, to stay accountable and to move forward in our lives. And I needed that in spades. You hear what I'm saying? Because I didn't play well with others and I did not do that well on my own. So I am so grateful for the gifts that God has given to other people and they were willing to utilize those gifts of uh, teaching me, because teaching is a gift. Uh, uh, hospitality when somebody is hospitable to you and they can take you in their arms and make you feel at home and and give you comfort make you feel like you fit that's a that's a thing you know Absolutely. and some of us have that and it's important because if we don't love on people man they're not going to feel like they're part and God wants everybody to feel connected and to feel part so all of our gifts work together you know and so I'm excited about that so in first Peter 4 and 10 the reason why we get these gifts, it says each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others. others. Thank you. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So I pray that God will help all of us to be a faithful steward over the gift that he has given us, that we won't be afraid to walk in it, that we won't be afraid to reach outside of ourselves and flow in whatever that gift might be. Okay, some people are prophetic, but they're scared to open their mouth. <clears throat> some people have the gift of hospi hospitality, uh, but they haven't really tapped into it yet. They 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 think they'd like to do that, but then they get stuck with four people. Man, look, God wants to broaden you. Uh, he might have you throwing parties every weekend at your house, man. Just you know, everybody getting those little scrabble party or something, you know. Or popcorn party, you know, let's get together and read the word or let's watch a movie together, you know, something because people in the body need to be connected to each other, right? Because in the New Testament, when the church first started, the word says that they were getting together from house to house. You know, and so they were all together. They were all encouraging one another. And, and, you know, I dig we're all, we all, you know, we all have things going on in our lives and stuff, but we still have to figure out how we can carve out time for each other. You know what I'm saying? And I'm proud of you guys for being here tonight. Um, first Timothy four and 14. First off, it's who gives the gift. Why do we get the gift? And now how do we develop? It says first Timothy four, 14, do not neglect your gift which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them. Because you do, you will save both yourself and those who are hearing you. Now, I want to talk, be diligent in these matters to give yourself wholly to them. So you might recognize that you have a gift that needs to be developed. Amen? Sometimes speak, somebody will speak a prophetic word over you and say, you know, I see the Lord doing great things. You're going to go to China one day or you're going to have a business and you're going to be able to support people. Or I see you're going to have a church. You're going to be a pastor and this and that. But if you do not take the time to grow in Christ, if you don't take the time to figure out how these things go together, it's not going to fall in your lap. Okay? God requires us to learn he requires us to grow does it take effort yeah it's a pain in the butt nobody wants to go to school nobody wants to have to uh, expose themselves to things that make them uncomfortable but God stretches us I mean I think he kicks back and laughs at me a lot like ha 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 you gotta get up on Thursday ha 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 how you like it now you know <laughs> so he can, God comes with jokes he's he's really oh, yeah. he's he's all like that you know so so we have to be diligent to work our gift, to, to, to open ourselves up. I mean, you, you can't get up and preach unless you're willing to get in the Word and learn what it says, unless you're willing to spend some time with God and get to know who He is, or you won't have anything to give out. Nobody wants to just come here, you run your head, you know? They want something substantial, amen? Amen. I just want to share this with you, because it can get real simple. Uh, 
and I'm sure everybody's familiar with this. This comes from Ephesians 2 and verse 8. It says, by grace are you saved through faith, and that yeah. not of yourselves. Yeah. It is the yeah. gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, once we come into the salvation, God's looking for something from you, real simple. You know what it's called? Availability. All you need to be is available, available to spend time with him. You know, people do this thing, you know, hey, I want to, I, I spent an hour in prayer today. And, you know, back in the day, I was spending like maybe 15 minutes, if that. And I was like, well, you know, what can you do with that? <laughs> but it grew. Yeah. It continued to grow. And in the midst of that, just that little bit that I have was something that I would share with other people. And I saw other people come into the kingdom and grow. It wasn't because of me. A matter of fact, I was the bait more or less, and God was growing two people, the person that I was sharing with and me too. So God's just looking for you to be available and tell your story. That's good. You don't need to create something, you know, because, hey, God is great, and uh, I've, I've done this before, so I'm just going to help some people out. God don't need you to lie for it. Because sometimes, you know, you tell these big grandiose stories that's really not going on in your life. God just, you know, all you need to just tell what he's doing. That I started out and now, you know, things that I used to do and I felt so comfortable with, I don't feel comfortable doing that anymore. And apparently something's going on on the inside of me. So those stories like that help people to grow. And then the next thing is investment. You know, sometimes in, in, uh, in life and in the kingdom of God, people talk about not having stuff. Well, you know, the way that you start to grow and to have things is that you need to invest. And by the same token, you need to allow God to invest in you. You need to invest some time in reading the word of God. You won't understand everything that you read when you first start. But you know what? It's a neat thing. You read something don't understand what you just read feel like you know hey I kind of wasted that time and then all of a sudden and this is my place because I had a study at home that I used to go and study in and I got nothing but when I was out there doing the grass a scripture that I read would come to my mind and it's like God would just start to take it apart like Legos and show me how to assemble it so it's in those simple moments that God will start to show you his treasures but it starts off with you being available and making the investment of time. No. Hello. Okay. I was, yeah. Did you keep paper in your pocket? No. Cause like, see at my age, I don't do mental notes anymore. When I get <laughs> cool stuff, I got to have like a piece of paper or my phone where I can go to the notes and write it down. I'll totally forget. Now I do have things that I write down, but I'm saying for the most part, some of the things that I've just read when you're just in your least time. I know what you're saying. Just, I'm just saying like you can't no, be cutting grass have... and get some cool revelation and oh, then remember it an hour later. Oh, and sometimes yes, it could. goes, whatever. I need hit, to, y'all you know, need be, to pray for me. <laughs> because the issue is the revelation that you get is something that you're dealing with right then. So uh, it's not just, it's not something that you have to go preach immediately. It's something that deals with you right there where you are. That's and good. And you can't just shut that off. Man, that on. is good stuff. Absolutely. I like it. Come That's on. That's the way he rolled. Yeah, right? <laughs> Absolutely. That is so awesome, man. I love the word of God. I love I love when God opens it up. You know, it's crazy. You think there were like several hundred years where they called it the dark ages where they said God was silent. He didn't really speak to anybody. Could you imagine? I just can't even. We're so blessed, man, we, to be in so much of the presence of God. I just can't even hardly imagine not being able to hear him speak. It just Amen. freaks me out. Amen. Yep. And I, I went back to the Old Testament because, you know, even before Jesus came, God wanted the people to be very careful with the sacred gifts. In uh, Leviticus 22, 2, it says, Tell Aaron and his sons to be very careful with the sacred gifts that the Israelites set apart for me, so they do not bring shame on my holy name. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. And um, it, Numbers 18, 29 said, Be sure, this is the NLT version, Be sure to give the Lord the best portions of the gifts given to you. Amen. He wants us, and then Numbers 18.32 says, You will not be considered guilty for accepting the Lord's tithe. 
the Lord gives back to us. So he gives us gifts too. If you give the best portion to the priests, be careful not to treat the holy gifts of the people of Israel as though they were common. If you do, you will die. Mm. We've got to be careful once we know who gives us those gifts and we develop them. We, we have to be careful with how we use them. I mean, people's eternity is at stake. Mm. It's not, you know, we're sealed. We're sealed for the day. Christ is in us. For those of you that have received him as your Lord and Savior, that free gift, that, that unbelievable, um, no value can be placed on it. It's so unbelievable. Gift that he has, be very careful with it. Because those you share it with, you've got to be careful not to bring shame to him. Amen. Being careful, speaking the truth. You don't have to lie for God. Now be careful if you do. <laughs> He'll correct you. He'll bring you out of that corner oh, you've been hiding absolutely, in. Absolutely. So unwrap him. Unwrap him. Let unwrap him. him. Yeah, like an onion. Let like him a gift. Your heart. Unwrap him. <laughs> Just unwrap him and start Take the bear him. off. <laughs> I think maybe it was a hallmark thing that they used to use because, you know, of course, they're trying to sell something. But they had this slogan that says, the gift that keeps on giving. Okay. Well, that's, that's God. He's the gift that keeps on giving because he allows you to touch people. And you know what? It's interesting. When you see somebody come to saving faith or start to live where they're walking in a successful place, man, you get just as blessed as the people. You're in on it as well. You see a family that's dysfunctional and not working, and you share the word of God with them, and all of a sudden, people get saved in there. They start working together as a unit. You're just as blessed as they are, man. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, that overflow is something. That is true. That is a good thing. Who gives gifts? Holy Ghost? Who else, give, who else gives gifts? Jesus? That's good. Who else gives gifts? All right, we got Holy Spirit, we got Jesus, the Father, you, Amen. you give gifts. Mm. The Father, it says, uh, God gives gifts to us eternal life. Mm. John three sixteen. what did he do? He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Amen. that whosoever believes on him will not, what? Perish, Perish. Perish but have what? everlasting life so that is a gift from god what is another gift from god holy spirit that's right because the word says jesus is it's expedient that i go away so that the holy spirit can come and it says it like this in luke eleven thirteen. if you then that are so evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the holy spirit to them who ask him jesus gives gifts Amen. I heard some folks say Jesus. Jesus, let me tell you what, Jesus was 33 years old. He was about that life. He was out there with his boys going town to town, seeing people get healed. You don't think that's a rush, man, to see somebody get up off the mat or Amen. blind eyes open? Come in, let me spit on your eyes, bro. <laughs> I think he was just caught up in the moment, you know, <laughs> getting crazy with it. It, it. And so, like, you don't think he's in the prime of his life. And then all of a sudden, the father says, it's time. Mm. This is the year. And so sometimes when we live in this world, we forget we're not actually of this world. We got a different dimension that we're going to be going to. You know what I'm saying? That's where you can't cling too tight to the things of this world. Everything here is passing away, even people. You love your people, but, man, we're all going to be leaving mm -hmm. here one day. You can't be freaking out when it happens. So the Father says, you know, it's not, and, and what did Jesus do? Jesus in his humanity in a garden breaks down he's freaking so hard that he's got sweated he, he's sweating drops of blood i mean that's a real medical thing when mm. they say that when stress i can't remember the name of it but it, when stress is so great you literally have little things busting and you have blood that's coming out that's a real deal and he said you know lord he said father if there's any other way that we can do this without me having to go down like this can can you just let this cup pass I mean, he, he went back a couple of times and, and just praying and asking. And then he accepted. He said, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus gave his life. We all kind of cling to living, right? Yeah. 
And he literally gave the, the most expensive, can't get it back gift that you, you've ever seen, his life. You know, that, that was just heavy to me. Um, he also gave the gift of righteousness and justification because it, it tells us in Romans 5, 1, that through faith in what he did, it makes us righteous in the front of God. It makes us justified in front of God. You know, that's why it's not all about us. We're our little nasty self. Jesus comes in as, <laughs> as we accept what he did for us. It covers us. And then God like sees him over us, if that makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. So he gave us righteousness. And that was his gift. And he also gave us the gift of suffering. Some people are, that ain't, that's the gift I'd rather leave wrapped. <laughs> well, nobody wants to suffer. But you grow more and you develop more in the valley than you do on the hill. It's great to be on the hill and rub a little sunshine on your face and have good times. And God gives that us because you can't live in the valley all the time. You won't make it. You'd be like, hope deferred's making my heart sick. I just want to die. <laughs> you know, so God gives us seasons of growth with the gift of suffering. And I know some people are like, man, that's just for real, I just don't even do that. First Peter 4, 12 through 16, y'all need to rub that. R rub that. Y'all need to... <laughs> <laughs> y'all need to read that when you get a, when you get a minute. Uh, yeah, First Peter 4, 12 through 16. <laughs> it basically says, Be loved. Think it not strange, this fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing is happening to you. Be loved. It's coming. <laughs> You know, in some form or fashion, just get ready. Put your little, put your little pampers on. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's saying, don't, don't think it's strange that something's gonna go down in your life, man. It, it, it is what it is. None of us get are exempt from that. I don't care. It, it, I don't care if you President Joe Biden or you, you know, you the janitor at the school. So everybody's gonna have a little taste of something. You know, Absolutely. we all suffer. We all struggle. In Romans uh, 5, 3 through 5, it talks about, uh, you know, it produces character in us that, that, that patient, it, let me see, where is that? I have pulled it up. Um, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And so I think they added hope in there saying that it, the hope doesn't put us to shame because sometimes when we're going through something, some people, some, sometimes people in the Christian faith have been the world's worst. They'd be like, turn on you. Are you, are you going through something? What'd you do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you got sick. God don't like you anymore. No. <laughs> I got sick because I live in a sin sick world and sometimes the body breaks mm. down and it don't want to do right. But I'm believing God to bring me through. You going to believe Amen. with me or you going to hate? <laughs> Amen. Amen. It brings Come substance. On. It brings depth because you yes. know. Uh, Come on. That's good. I can talk about this because I were one. I was a brat, okay? All right. I wasn't going through a whole lot, you know, and came from a good home. So All right. I kind of had this attitude. Mm -hmm. So it didn't have much character. But you know what? When you go through something, Speak. it develops character on the inside of you. And when other people have issues, you can speak to that. And you're not speaking from here. You're speaking from here. Love it. That's because great. you've been there. You know what it's like. And you know that there is going to be another side to that. You're going to yes. come out of it. You know, I spend time with people sometimes with, uh, with marriages and issues that they've been through. Because you know what? I be in one. <laughs> and working through that process every day, got somebody just fantastic. I love her, but you know what? We're I, human people. We're just... I love her butt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love my butt. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but anyway... You know, that builds the character on the inside of you, and it becomes even a greater gift. Because you know what? Sometimes you look at different stones when you find them in their natural place. And I'm talking about valuable stones. They're not with this glimmer and this glistening to them. Those stones have to be rubbed. They have to be polished. They have to go through a process. And all of a sudden, you get that glitter. You get that sheen that's on them. And that's what happens with us. The gift that starts with us continues to produce life as we go through changes and as we become more valuable. 
quick story, try to make this really quick. There was uh, an instance told in a song of a man that they had a violin and they were trying to auction it off and nobody wanted to buy it because it's as old as crusty and all of that. Then this man walked up and he saw the bow on this side and he took the bow and he tightened up the strings and he started to play this beautiful music on it. Then all of a sudden, the bids for this violin went through the roof. And the people said, well, what made the difference? It's the touch of the master's mm. hand. Come on, come on, that's great. And you see, that's the deal. That's the gift. You know, okay, we've been given the gift, but when he holds us mm. and when he starts to play that song, mm. that's good. and people, because people look at you and they say, man, you could have never gone through anything. Mm. Oh, we all got stories, don't we? <laughs> we don't have jokes. We got stories about stuff like that. <laughs> but believe me, it's the touch of the master's hand. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's true. We, you know, I was thinking about the trials and the temptations and Romans, I mean, James 1, 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation for afterward they will receive the crown of life Amen. that God has promised to those who love him. I was thinking today, I was talking to somebody a little bit earlier, right before service, and we were talking about things being bittersweet. You know, such a great occasion can uh, turn bittersweet quickly, but the Lord can use those times where think in the bitters and bring out the sweetness. That bitter becomes a fragrant offering to the Lord. Amen. Those things that hurt us can bring about joy. Mm. The things that we go through start to reveal the true beauty of the gem that's inside of us, which is the heart of Christ that has become our heart. So um, just like in the, when it speaks of him taking the heart of stone and replaces it with a heart of flesh, learning how to love as Christ loved. So those are gifts that we can give. The biggest gift we can give people is the love of Christ, share the love of Christ with them. That's good. That's good. That is good, and that is one of our one of our gifts that we give to people. Um, Matthew six three, we help the less fortunate. Uh, Romans eleven, we impart spiritual gifts to people, mm -hmm. you know, by teaching and 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 uh, showing other people how to walk. Well, Y'all, when I got saved, I I was such a hooch. I didn't even know how to dress like church folk. I had to like go in easy and look. <laughs> Yeah, they wear clothes that cover them and stuff. I better get some, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm, I hate to say that, but I mean, it's just where I was at the time, you know. That's why I've never, I've never judged people, and I've, and I've gotten angry with people that judge people that come in here, because you don't know. It might be all that that person has, or they just may not know any better, you know. And I have gone through in love and just pulled that shirt way up to their neck, and I said, I love you. You know, and after you do that a few times, they get the message. You know what I'm saying? I need to start changing this area and stuff. But you got to walk in love, and you got to love people where they're at. So you got to impart those spiritual gifts. You got to teach them. You know, we got to honor our parents. You know, as they age, we got to take care of them. Uh, that's the first uh, commandment we promise: is to honor your parents. You know. Um, and, and it doesn't matter whether they were good, bad, or ugly. It, that's yeah. not, the, you know, God don't ask you that. You know, he's, he, it doesn't have nothing to do with what you got to do, you know, how people treat you. Uh, we got to leave an inheritance to our children's children, not just money, but, uh, uh, you know, we, we have to leave a good legacy for them to follow. We got to be those people of integrity that they can look to and say, my papa would have done it like this. You know what I'm saying? That's important, man, to leave that for them. Can Especially this world's so crazy, yeah. Because I really wanted to hit that because you brought up something so important. You know, the greatest gift you can give your children is to train them, to teach them about God, to share that with them. Because you know what? As we look at all the different ills around in society now, you see, I remember people used to say, well, such and such ain't got no home training. Well, you know, but the issue is a lot of people don't have a home at all now. True that. So it's an opportunity to reach out and to share with people and to pass that on. Make sure that those jewels of home life and of, of having God in the home, make sure you share that with your children so that it gets passed to the next generation. Do not let that thing slip mm. by any means because it is a gift, not just to your children, but it becomes a gift to society itself. That's exactly right. That's good, brother, because there's been a lot of disconnection and a lot of dysfunction in this world, and you're seeing the result of it. You can see why the Word of God said that in that day, you're going to have mothers against daughters. You're going to have 
uh, in-law against in-law. You're going to have fathers against sons, children against their parents. You can see it right now. People are drawing lines in the sand, and they're, like, bucking up on stuff that's not even... Those who can see it are going, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. When did we start hating each other? You know, when did this political thing here become more important than than loving your neighbor and doing for each other. It's just crazy where we're finding ourselves. Well, we're getting near the end, so I want to just go through a couple of things. Um, first, I want to thank you guys for being with me tonight. I've enjoyed it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and that y'all have gotten something tonight. All right. Woo -woo. All right. I wanted to just take one little moment and run through these right quick. Gifts that you got from God that you may not realize are gifts because you take them for granted. What about time? Oh, that's good. Hezekiah got deathly ill, and he asked God to give him 15 more years. God blessed him with the gift of time. Amen? Yes. What about opportunities? Yep. Matthew uh, 25, 15 says, To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. You know, you gotta you gotta be able to to do something. You know, you gotta have that gift in you. Uh, you know what I'm saying, Philip? I can't work on a car. I don't. You know what I'm saying, Raven? I can't do hair. I don't even. You know, I mean, I could put a strip of pink, but that's about as far as I rock it. Before me doing it myself, and Christy does hair. Man, she's amazing. She, she it's a gift and a talent that God has given her. You know what I'm saying? And so He has been able to give her something that gives her opportunity to do something. You know what I'm saying? Jeremy's an amazing carpenter, man. He can like throw something together and make it happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And Todd Keller, he's always coming and showing me pictures. These are the floors I did last week. You wouldn't believe what this dump looked like before I got on it. That's a gift, man, yes, to be is. able to beautify something or whatever. And all of us have that. And we can use those gifts for opportunities because God will give you the opportunity, but he ain't going to put it in your hand. You know, the early bird gets the worm, but he still got to dig it out. You know, <laughs> the, the God provides the worm, but you got to work it, you know. Uh, the ability to prosper, Deuteronomy 8.18. That's a gift, man. That is a gift to be able to figure out how to, how, you know, to, to recognize the gifts that God gives you to do something with. Rain. What about rain? Deuteronomy says God gives rain to the earth. You say, well, I ain't worried about no rain. I get my corn at this grocery store. Where do you think you got your corn at the grocery store, fool? I mean, you know what I'm saying? The meat didn't just come packaged like that. I grew up in the city. I just saw the meat in the, in the grocery. I just figured that's what it always looked like. First time I saw a cow, I was like, oh, no. Oh, I'm feeling bad about it. Making I, everyone eat a steak. Right? I, well, it didn't stay with me that long, but it, it was kind of bad, you know. Uh, sleep. Whoever struggled with sleep, the word says in Psalms, he gives his beloved sweet sleep. You don't know how many times I've claimed that. Food, everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. God gives you food. You know, we get up and eat every day. We get up and see the sunlight every day. And we take it for granted. You ever wake up one morning and you can't see, you're going to know something. Appreciate your eyes. Appreciate you got groceries in the cabinet. I remember a day back in the gap when I didn't have nothing. I go look in that cabinet. <laughs> Oh, Bishop have to go out and hunt a squirrel, you know? Think I'm lying about it. I can cook squirrel 12 different ways. What? Squirrel fricassee, that's right. Watch out for the BBs, that's all I know. <laughs> but sometimes we just, things seem so automatic, we, we take it for granted, you know? You're people. You know, don't take your people for granted. They might not be there anymore. You never know. That's true. You know, I mean, there's just lots of things. Peace. Jesus said, and as Christians, man, we got to really develop that peace in our life because Jesus said, my peace I leave you, not as the world gives you. 
Because the peace you get from the world, your security and your money, your, your, your uh, luxury of watching TV and being entertained, the peace that you get from those things, that doesn't last. But the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that he gives, sees you through the crisis and the hardship. And she left me and my heart's broken, this and that. And I don't have no money to make my bill. You know, the peace of God comes in and he says, you know, somehow, some way, we're going to make it through. You're going to be all right. You can't buy that, man. Nope. Nope. And we take it for granted when we're bumping along and we, we forget how quickly it can go. Keys to the kingdom. God gives us authority and power over these things. And so we want to leave you guys with that. We love you and we Amen. bless you and we appreciate you and we want to pray you out tonight. Amen. Lord, we just give you glory and honor and praise. We worship you. We love you. And we thank you that you have given this time to us tonight. Lord, I just pray that you speak to each and every one of our hearts, Lord God, and let your word just rise up. Let it bring us comfort. Let it teach us. Help us to walk out knowing that you love us and that you it's your kindness, Lord, that's, that's pulled us in. And it's your kindness that keeps us, Lord. It's not really anything about how great we are, you know? So help us to not focus so much on ourselves, but to keep our eyes on you, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, I speak your favor and blessing. I pray that each and every person in here would know how amazing they are to you, that you gave them life, you continue to give them life, and you have given each and every one of us an amazing gift that we can use for your glory. Help us to figure it out and to get in it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we love you. We're going to see you back here Sunday. It's a kid takeover. It ought to be really interesting <laughs> to see some kids taking over. And I say, that ought to be great, right? <laughs> All right. Well, we love you. We bless you. Y'all have a wonderful night. Rest in the Lord, guys. <laughs>